Hi there, in this video we're going to look at model inheritance in Django and we're going to see what that means and how to apply it in your Django projects. Now this is quite similar to class-based inheritance in object-oriented programming but it applies to your underlying database tables and the structure of your database tables as well. So in this video we're going to look at a couple of different methods for model inheritance in Django notably these two here. Now the first method in the documentation that's listed is the method of abstract base classes and the second is multi-table inheritance. So we're going to walk through both of these methods in this video and we're going to see how to apply both of them and the pros and cons of these approaches. Now in this video to work with these examples we're going to set up some models that will replicate a very basic quiz system in Django. So let's go to VS Code and we'll go to the models.py file here. Now I've created a virtual environment and I have Django and Django extensions installed. You can install those if you don't already have them. And Django extensions has been added to the settings installed apps, as you can see here. And we have an application called Core. Now we're going to edit the models file within that and we're going to create the quiz application models. So let's start by creating a quiz model and this is going to be the, the top level model in this application and it will inherit from the models.model and to that we're going to add one field and that's going to be the name of the quiz and that's going to be a car field. And finally we're going to add a dunder string method and that will return the name of the quiz when we see that model. So the idea behind this application's models is that we have this top level quiz model and for each quiz in our app, we are going to have multiple questions. So we now need to create these question models. Now we want to create two different types of questions in our app. Firstly, we want multiple choice questions where the user is given a question and they're given multiple options. Secondly, we want a simple true and false question, a Boolean question. So we're going to create both of these and we're going to show different model inheritance strategies in order to do that. And the first strategy we're going to do is the abstract model strategy. So let's start by creating a question here. And this is going to be another model in our Django app. Now each question needs a link to its parent quiz. So we're going to create a field called quiz here, which is a foreign key. And that's going to relate the question model to its parent quiz. So the first argument is quiz. And the on delete strategy, we're just going to cascade. So if the quiz is deleted, that will delete all associated questions. Finally, we'll give it a related name of questions so that we can access the quizzes questions from the quiz model. And now let's add a couple of extra fields here. Firstly, the text. So that's going to be the actual text for the question. And secondly, the order. So for each question in a quiz, we want to capture what order that question is. So the quizzes will be ordered from the first question up till the last question. Now, because the questions have an order, I'm going to add a meta class here, and I'm going to say that the ordering field should be this order. And that will then order a query set of questions by the order column. And the final step for this question model is to add a dunder string method and that will return the text for the question. Now we want to make this an abstract model so there's a single field that we add to the meta class and that's called abstract and we'll set that equal to true. Now when you create an abstract model in Django it means that the underlying database table will not be created for this model. Other models can inherit from the question model and they will inherit all of the fields on that model but an abstract model is not actually converted into an underlying database table. So we're going to see that in a second. But for now, let's create two subclasses of this question model. The first one is going to be for the multiple choice question. And we're just going to call that MC question. And instead of inheriting from models.model, this is actually going to inherit from the abstract class that we defined above called question. So we put that in here. And let's add a single field to this model. It's going to be called number of answers and that will be a positive small integer field. And now that we have that, we're going to create a Boolean question model as well, which will also inherit from the abstract question class. And this is simply a container for true and false answers. For example, you can imagine a question are sets ordered data structures in Python. That's a yes or no, true or false answer. So we're going to give this one field is true and that's a boolean field. So with this structure we have our parent class here, this question class which is an abstract class which means it won't actually be created in the database as a table and secondly we have these two inheriting subclasses. These will have database tables and they inherit from their abstract parent class. So let's now see what actually happens to the underlying database. Now in order to do that we need to make the migrations and we're going to see an issue here when we do this. So let's expand the terminal and run the make migrations command and you can see that there are some errors and that's that the reverse accessor for the boolean question dot 
quiz field that clashes with the MC question dot quiz. So the reverse accessor, that's the related name here. So because we've used a single field name and we have two inheriting subclasses here, that cannot be and we need to change that. And we can look at the documentation for Django. There is a section for this problem. Be careful with the related name and the related query name attributes. It says here that you must always specify a unique reverse name and query name for a field. And that can cause a problem for your abstract base classes because the fields on the class are included in all of the child classes. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this class label and then that will solve the problem for us and we can see what that does in the database once we make those migrations. So let's copy that attribute and we're going to paste that in here to the related name and save that and now when we run make migrations we should see that there are no issues and we create these three models. Now important to note here we don't see a question model this one here being created we see a quiz a multiple choice question and a boolean question and that's because the question model of course is abstract so the actual underlying database table is not created so let's now migrate these changes so python manage.py migrate and that should apply the changes to our database and if we examine that database with the visual studio code sqlite extension let's expand this out and we can look at the tables that have been created now in the core application where we've made our changes we see that we have a quiz table we have a multiple choice question and a boolean question table. We don't have the question table because it's abstract. But if we look at each of the question models and we show the table, or rather we can look at the fields, they all inherit the text, the order, and the quiz ID. And those fields are coming from this parent question abstract model. So the subclasses inherit those fields and each of the database tables contains these fields, the text, the order and the quiz IDs. And if we look at the fields in the Boolean question table, you see that that has also inherited those fields and it has its own is true field, which is of course the field that's specific to that abstract class. So that's how abstract classes work in Django. The fields in the abstract class are inherited by all child models and they're added to each of the tables for each child model. So let's go to the shell plus now and we're gonna add some entities to this database. So we can run the command python manage.py shell plus to open up the Django extensions shell. Now we're going to create a quiz instance here. So let's paste this command in and it's quiz.objects.create and we'll give the quiz a name of python data types. Now if we attempt to do some operations with the question model, you'll see that it's not defined. We haven't actually imported it because it's an abstract class. We can import the class definition though and that's from core.models import question. And if we try and access all of the questions in the database, you're going to see an error here. And that's that the question model has no attribute objects. Objects is a model manager and it only applies to concrete models in Django. So we can't access all of the questions. We need to use one of the subclasses such as mcquestion.objects.all. And in this case, that returns an empty query set because we don't have any questions in the database. So what we're going to do now is add four questions, two multiple choice questions and two Boolean questions to our database. So that should do that. You don't need to follow that code there. But um, now we have two questions of each type. So if I now type the command we did before, which was mcquestion.objects.all, we now have a query set with two questions in it. And if we want to access that from our quiz, it's going to be quiz.mcquestion. All. Now, MC question is the multiple choice question reverse access. So that gets all of the multiple choice questions associated with a quiz. And it's called that because of this related name. Remember that we changed that to the name of the class that is being referred to. And in this case, it's the MC question class and it lower cases all of that. So if we wanted to access from a quiz all of the Boolean questions associated with that quiz, it would be quiz.booleanquestion.all. So this quiz now has two of each type of question associated with it. What you might commonly want to do is get all of the questions associated with a quiz. Now you would normally write a query such as this question.objects.filter and you would get all questions belonging to that quiz. But unfortunately we can't do that because the question model is an abstract class. One way to do it is we could use the itertools.chain method. So from the itertools module in Python we could import the chain method. We could then get all of our multiple choice questions with this query here, multiple choice question .objects .all. And we could get our boolean questions as well with boolean question .objects .all. And once we have the two of those, we can use the chain function and we can pass in both MC and BQ to that. 
and we can convert that ettertools.chain object to a list using the list function in Python. That's a built in and we get back our objects here. That of course gives us back a list, not a query set, which might not be ideal, but it will work if you want to get all of the questions associated with your quiz. So that covers everything for abstract classes. You can see the effect that this has in the database. It creates a table for each of the subclasses, but the parent class, the question class in this case, does not have a table in the database. All of the fields in the abstract class are inherited by each subclass and added to those tables as columns. But we can see there are some complications in querying these tables because we can't get all of the questions without using something like ittertools.chain. So we're now going to see another approach, multi-table inheritance, and how that differs from our abstract models. So let's delete the SQLite database here. We're going to delete that and we're also going to remove this migration here that created the changes in that database. Now it's a very, very simple change here. We just need to remove this abstract equals true from the meta class for the question model. And if we do that and save the models.py file, we should now be able to make the migrations and see the difference in this effect. So let's exit out of the shell and we can run make migrations and that should now create the models. And you can see that this time it actually has created the question model here. So because it's no longer abstract, it creates the underlying database table. So let's migrate and see what has happened here. If we examine the database file here by opening it, we can then look at the tables that have been created. So let's refresh this. And we now see that we have a question table, which we didn't have before because it was an abstract model. Now it's not, it's a concrete model. So it creates that table in the database. And if we look at the fields, we see that we have the fields that are associated with the question class here. And there are two key differences here between the abstract approach and the multi-table inheritance approach. Firstly, we actually get a database table when we use multi-table inheritance, as you can see here. And the second important change is that the subclasses they don't inherit the fields from the parent class in the actual database table. So if we look at the MC question, the multiple choice question, we now have a pointer to the parent question ID, which itself points to the question table. So beforehand, these subclasses, these tables contained all of the fields from the parent. In this case, we now have a pointer to the concrete table that's been created for the question, as well as all of the fields that are specific to each subclass. So the pointer is a foreign key to the parent question model, which wasn't there before because we had an abstract model. So all of the fields were just contained within each subclass. So now we have this pointer ID and we can go back to the shell and we can see how this works. So let's type python manage.py shell plus here. And within the shell, we can create that quiz instance again. And we're gonna now add four questions of type MC question and Boolean question. So this isn't the cleanest syntax, apologies for that, but it's basically adding two multiple choice questions and two Boolean questions to the database. And it's associating those questions with the quiz that we've just created. Now, what's quite interesting about this is if we look at this last query here for the Boolean question, um, we can see that we pass the quiz, the text and the order as well as is true. Now in the database, if we look at the question table and the Boolean question table, the Boolean question only has this is true and then it has a pointer to the question. But we are passing to the dot create function, the quiz, the text and the order as well as is true. So those fields are automatically translated to the parent table in the database. So that's quite interesting. It means we can easily create Boolean question objects and the fields that belong to the parent they are passed along and created within the parent table. And importantly, we couldn't query the question model before because it was abstract, but now we can run this query question.objects.all and we get back all of the questions. So this is easier to query uh, than before. But on the other hand, we now have this form key that's been created between each of the subclasses and the parent class in this table inheritance structure. Now, one issue with multi-table inheritance is that all of these objects are returned as questions and we don't necessarily know which subclass of question we actually are dealing with, whether it's a multiple choice question or a Boolean question. So for example, let's try and get the last of these questions with the question.objects.last call. And that gives us the last question. Now, if we try and access the is true attribute, we see that the question has no attribute is true. And that is obvious because this particular model here 
Uh, that's the parent model and it doesn't have that is true attribute which exists only on the boolean question. And similarly if we try and access the number of answers attribute which is on the multiple choice question model we get the same error, it doesn't have that attribute on the question. So how do we get to the child class from the parent class in multi-table inheritance? Now we can reference the Django documentation here and it's the multi-table inheritance section of this page here. And you can see there's a multi-table structure here where you have a place and a restaurant subclass which inherits from the place. Now if you have a place that's also a restaurant, you can get the place to return that using the lowercase version of the model name. So in this example here, it gets a place object from the database and it can reference the underlying restaurant field using the lowercase of the model name. So we can apply that here, um, but we don't necessarily know which model it is. So that's one of the tricky parts. So let's get the last question and we can try and reference the Boolean question and we see that it is in fact a Boolean question. So once we've got that, we can then access the fields that are specific to the Boolean question, such as is true, and we see that that returns true here. Conversely, if we try and access the underlying subclass, but it turns out it's not an instance of that, such as MC question, we get an error in that case and we can't do that. So this approach allows you to work directly with the question model because it has a underlying database table and it has objects. One of the cons though, as you can see when you run question.objects.all, is that you get back a query set here which contains instances, but you don't necessarily know which subclass, if any, these instances are in the query set. Now, this video is getting a bit longer than I thought, so I'm gonna wrap this up now. In another video, I'm gonna show this particular utility here called Inheritance Manager. This comes from the Django Model Utils Library and this allows you to get the subclasses from your query set when you're using multi-table inheritance. So we'll go into that in another video. For now, let's wrap this up. We've seen how to use abstract classes and multi-table inheritance in this video. We've seen that abstract classes don't get an underlying database table and that the subclasses of an abstract class they inherit all of the fields and all of those fields are converted into columns for each subclass. On the other hand, we see that with multi-table inheritance, we actually get a database table for each class, including the parent class, and the children, the subclasses, they get a pointer in the database, which is a foreign key or a one-to-one -one field. They get a pointer to that table, which is the parent in the database. So these are different approaches. Each one has pros and cons. And in a future video, we'll look at this inheritance manager from Django model utils. And we'll also look at proxy models. This is another method of model inheritance. And that's number three here in the documentation. We covered one and two. Number three is when you only want to modify Python level behavior of a model without changing the actual fields, you can use proxy models for that. So we'll cover that in a future video. For now, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed and learned something. Please like and subscribe to the channel if so. And we'll see you in another video.